set really great against Winter. So this is the important junction again for Vichy Gaming. You want to take out a hero and just pick your combinations later, be it the Darks here. There's no Darks here, so the, the second combination is obviously the, the Phoenix with the Wyvern, with, which we see from e -Home previously. I wonder if Ehome are scared of that combo as they have seen themselves how well they can execute it. And there's also Queen for plenty of AoE damage. And it's hard to deal with. If you try to go and kill the egg, you have to be spread out while you do it. But when you see the supernova drop, you don't have time to, okay, let's spread out, guys. You just click the egg. That's the first thing. Why would you ban the Spirit Breaker? I'm a bit surprised by that one. Because I, I feel like Winter Wyvern is one of those heroes that's really good against it. It is. It is interesting. I'm not sure what they have in mind. It's probably maybe they just wanted to take out an offlane hero, a tanky offlane hero, and they are picking, because they are picking a task as well, they want to remove the hero pool. Yeah, they're maybe just focusing on ROTK, but then the obvious hero for him, I'd say, would be Clockwork. Yeah, that's like the, the remaining one that he plays. Might also be because they want to pick Anti-Mage. There's also Tide. He's a Tide Hunter picker in a sense, but I mean, we haven't seen Tide at all. So far, I mean, Tide has the same issue why I mentioned with Ben, like why the reason Queen of Pain suddenly has been seeing a decline because Tide has the same problem along a really long cooldown ultimate. Yeah. It is very tough to bring that in. A lot of Tide fans here, though. So many Tide sweaters, Tide cosplay, like Tide everything. Plushies. Yeah, so much stuff, and then no pick. He's a very entertaining hero to watch, I feel. You know, Ravage is already, always like great to see. Oh. And we haven't seen the Ravage effect. There's no chance that VT are going to pick it at least after a Rubik pick. That, I mean, that's so easy to steal for being such a strong ulti as well. I mean, do you still want to pick Luna into the Rubik right now? I mean, it's a hero that synergizes very well with the Wyvern ultimate. And they want to keep fighting, right? And Luna is very similar to Gyro, so... Luna for VG. Yeah. Yeah, it's also how Like, it's a hero how likes to play a lot. I don't like Luna against Storm and Gyro. I think she matches up poorly against those cores. Storm can jump away from her and Gyro, well, she can trade with him, but normally it's about killing the other's team, right? They don't go for each other mainly. Yeah, but if you want something that can fight, like Luna fits that criteria, but he doesn't fit well, like you mentioned, against a Storm, because you get punished by the Storm very easily. Uh, it depends what how wants to play, really. I think Anti-Mage is still an option, not banned out, good against Storm, good against Rubik, but uh, it comes down. I don't think it's the VG playstyle, really. Yeah, I it like takes, takes time to come online. For VG? Yeah, for the AM, I think, if they go for the AM. It's like a really high mobility with Queen and Tusk and Anti-Mage, like they're going to have a lot of a hard time killing people, and at the same time they can pick off like Gyrocopter Disruptor. very easily. Alright, Disruptor again, second time in a row, and is it a, I mean, in the first game, we were like, maybe they picked the Disruptor in order to, you know, not let them pick Storm, or it's just a preventive, you know, solution for the Storm. Is it now a Storm counter again? Because I don't feel like Disruptor is, like, the best heal versus Storm. I mean, he is pretty good. Because it's if easy just, for Storm to go for him. And yeah. just burst him down before anything happens. It's it's only really good if you're outside of the fight and in fog of war somewhere, or if the Storm is retreating. And that's pretty rare scenarios, because it's hard to hide from the Storm. Yeah, exactly, and especially Disruptor, you know, when you're on a Lion, for example, he usually has a blink, so it's easy for him to stay outside of the fight and just blink in, but Disruptor, he has to be close, because if you're really far away from the fight, then you're just irrelevant, you know, by the time you get to the fight, it's pretty much over. I don't know, it's a decent hero to combine Silence with Winter Wyvern, though, at least you have some AoE for that. This is interesting. Silence this is the combo like breaker, we call him. We haven't seen a lot of Silencer support so far. He is a very one good solution, uh, Wyvern, though. I, I, I really like it a lot. Storm can jump in, you silence, and then someone is definitely dead. And you don't need to get an Orchid at the same time. I didn't really expect the uh, Chinese teams to pick up on it, but maybe they saw VP success with it and wanted to try it out. It the... is beautiful to have the combination of Storm jumping in, silence popping his ulti. Then there's nothing to counter a Storm for the duration that he's trying to kill someone. And normally it can get out. So if he goes bot zone first, that can be the payoff. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a very strong initiation from e home. E -home has like the initiation advantage. It's the very first time e home picks Silencer in TI. Uh, it's been run on support by uh, C deck and newbie so far, but it hasn't been. It's the first time e home grabs the Silencer. And I'm assuming, assuming in support, I mean, it could be something else, but it's very unlikely. Good old support gyrocopter coming back. Oh, yeah. around with that. 
the, the Arc Copter. Why not? Arc Copter. Is that some flash tags? So, what does Vichy go for as a carry? There's still PL. There's still Anti Mage. I mean, PL is kind of good against Silencer, right? We talked about Anti Mage. Anti Mage. There you go. So, it would be an Anti Mage for Vichy Gaming. It's indeed a very good pick for them. They have a lot of uh, defensive spells for him, like with the Snowball, with the Winter Wyvern. They can save him. I think it was between those two heroes. Honestly, I would have preferred to see the PL more than the Anti Mage here. Um, I think it's fair to say that overall, like both the, are good though. I mean, the later we get in TI, the more we see late game heroes like, like PL and Anti Mage. They feel like go to picks every series. There's not any, like there's not a single series where we're not like. I mean, they might pick anti mage. It's a good pick for them. That's I don't a like common thing though. When, uh, when the pressure increases, Shine. you want to secure late game even more. What, what, what were you saying? I didn't like Clockwork here, just because they have so many heroes that can get out of it, including like Disruptor. But uh, thanking much better combos well with Silencer. Okay, thank you very much. Let's head down to the arena once more and rejoin our commentary team for game number two. Indeed, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game two between Vici Gaming and eHome. Game one, both teams playing exceptionally well, but at the end of the day, it was a little bit too much for, for eHome. And the draft this time, a little bit different, Cinderin, as we were saying. We're getting Silencer, a little bit of a different pick here for the side of eHome, and the fact that they finished up with the SK as well. It's going to be an exciting game to see between these two sides. I mean, from the draft alone, any kind of team taking the edge in your eyes? Mm. Not really. I actually think this is a pretty balanced draft. I think there's a lot of uh, possibility for both lineups. Uh, I personally think Disruptor is a really good hero against Storm Spirit, so I guess we'll we'll get that cleared up in this game. Or, well, it's a small sample size, but you know, um, a classic combo being run here by Ehome. By the way, the Sand King together with Silencer has been played a lot in the past. It allows the Sand King to burrow strike into Epi reliably instead of having to Epi blink burrow. Because the moment you get the Burrow Strike, you're just global. And if the enemy team has no BKBs, they actually have absolutely no counterplay for the incoming epicenter. So looking forward to seeing that. As far as Vici goes, definitely comfort zone for them getting the anti-mage for Hal. My main concern for them, though, is how much are they going to get out of their support duo? It is a Wyvern together with Disruptor. I feel like this combo is fairly weak when it comes to early rotations, and CTY might have a really good mid lane. RG coming out on the top. He's going to be spotted out here by Howe's how heads back up. So another RTK is about. RTK didn't actually yet. Uh, he didn't actually take a ward out with him onto this top lane. So nothing going down here on this off lane for him. Now just eyeing him up. And uh, towards the mid lane, of course, you've got Super and Femridge taking around. They're going to look to contest this top room. It's just DDC here. DDC, of course, this time going to be on the silence. And Lanham will be on the Rubik for this game for Ehome. So. And we'll see what they're going to be able to pull out of the bag at the same time. The fact that the Gyrocopter now, of course, uh, changing hands is going to be YJ getting the Gyro here for his side. And uh, the fact that they're running this anti mage. So, the how anti mage is this? I mean, well, looking at the fact that they've already got some, well, three fairly high intelligence heroes with the Rubik, the Silencer, and the Storm. I can't help but feel that once there's that point where the M's got his mansion, he's going to be very hard to kill. This is going to be a great game for the anti mage. Yeah, he has multiple choices. It's. I don't think they would have picked it if it wasn't for the Storm. Yep. He is the, absolutely the main target. But in a lot of situations, you can't fight the Storm, or another hero has way lower mana than the Storm, and you just go for a secondary target, and it can have a really major impact on the team fight too. So I'm definitely in agreement with that. Um, as far as when how starts being scary in team fights, I'm not sure the Manta is going to cut it. I think he might have to get even more than that, because in my opinion, Ehome has some pretty decent counterpicks to the anti mage here when he commits in, even if he Manta's there, the counterplay would be cool. Silent, there's of course Beating, the Burrow Strike. He's got to be oh, so wait, careful yeah, in the lane. Watch, I did, that was just one hit from Femra and then the dagger from uh, the Quat, the, uh, the Arctic Burn, of course, doing a lot against this very squishy Silent. And all the top lane, bit of a man fight between f and ROTK here. RTK gonna head back, the Thunder Strike bringing him low. Won't quite be able to find the kill, but forcing SK back. He's got a Sal, so he's gonna be alright. But nonetheless, creating a lot of space here for the How FY. And uh, of course, in the jungle, Femri just starting to make the stacks as well for the team, so to keep him in the game. Mid lane, we're seeing CTY. Doing pretty well, 3 4 1 4 4 at the moment. Lanham, pressing back, ice, ice, ice. We'll see how well he's able to carry off this Tusk off lane. Of course, one of the heroes he is most known for, so. And we'll see what Ice 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 is able to achieve with the Tusk this game. Back in the middle lane, DDC is going to be hanging around with CTY, just trying to be as annoying as he can to Super to ensure that CTY can have a good start in this lane, get his way towards level 6 without the Queen being able to find a solo pickle. Fenrir was looking to maybe fly across. This is a very classic way of ganking the mid lane when you're on the Dire and have a Wyvern. 
fly over the edge from the left, but didn't really dare to go for it. He knows TDC is on back up there, and even if he wasn't, it's probably too difficult for Super with this low of a health pool to engage on that kill. So they're not gonna do it. Maybe now they could consider trying again, though. Oh, here it comes your snowball. Ice, ice, ice. Just onto DDC, but both DDC and Lanham are here. They're gonna try and go for it here. DDC with the glaives. Don't want to count that little bit of eight pure damage adding up. Ice, ice, ice getting low. We'll just be able to get himself back over to his own side of the map. So he's going to be right mid lane. A bit of a dive going in onto the so CTY there. He, well, he's got a salve here. He, is he going to need to use it? It's going to bring him low these ticks. I think he's going to go down to about 3 HP or so. 6 HP. <laughs> very, very lucky there. CTY playing on the edge. And the salve is going to put him back into good shape. And he's only 50 gold away from that bottle now. So very fortunate that that didn't quite bring him over the edge there at that point. Yeah, he's going to be perfectly fine now. Super doesn't have too much mana to to pressure him with, and he's also doing fine on CS. He's actually out farming super as it looks right now. They're even, but there's a full creep wave coming in here for CTY. Let's see if he gets any of it. So far, 0 for 2. DDC on the side of hang around mid has definitely helped out CTY get this uh, bit of an advantage. Looking at the two carries at the moment, it's Howe with a slight edge, 17 for 5. Up against the Jara's 13 for 6. Now really being undisturbed entirely by the sanking. Well, RTK not able to do that much to slow down Howe's farm. And we did see RTK, of course, look for that rotation towards mid as well. So this anti mage is going to get a lot of space here soon. Yeah, that stat is slightly worrying, though. He's 0-3 in this patch with anti mage. <laughs> but they're still going to pick it, obviously, if it's a good pick. Um, games are way more complicated than that. It's obviously, in previous games they've picked, they have been close. And how has been performing pretty well. There were some questionable plays on his anti mage, I think, earlier in the tournament, but I feel like Vici Gaming have stepped up their game since then. And will be able to put on a good performance. And they have yet to lose a game at the main event. Let's keep it in mind, they're currently 4 and 0. They won their first dangerous best of one against. They were up 1 and 0 in this series. Before that, they 2 0 da 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 da. Uh, MVP I think they actually had two series before this one after the Navi. Right? So they're 5 0. Yeah, they 2 0 C9. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they're so 5 0 at the moment. They're on a really big run here, VG. I'm 